it's me again. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. There's recently been a Facebook trend of posting statuses with lists of 15 authors that influenced you somehow. The rules were that you should not think too much, just pick the first 15 that came to your mind, that had influenced you in any way and that would always be with you. I was talking to my friend Cynthia one of these days and she said I should make a video about my list and I thought it was a pretty interesting idea for a video. So here we go. This list is not organized in any particular order, it's definitely not an order of preference, just the way I was remembering the authors. First author on my list is Jane Austen. I first read Pride and Prejudice when I was about 14 years old, I think, and I became obsessed with her. And throughout the years I've read all six novels multiple times, some of the juvenilia and tons of fan fiction and other Austen related books. I met some of my best friends on online groups dedicated to discussing Austen and her works. She's had a huge impact on my life and she should obviously be the first author in this list. If you're interested in Austen's life, I've read this biography by Park Honnan. I had some issues with it, but it, overall it's a pretty decent biography. I hear that Claire Tomalins is better, but I haven't read that one yet. Second author on this list is Sylvia Plath. I relate very deeply to some of Plath's poems and The Bell Jar is definitely one of my favorite novels of all time. I read it when I was going through a pretty difficult period in my life and instead of making me more depressed, it brought me comfort. I know it's a very deep and hard read, can be a little bit triggering for some people, but I loved it and I definitely recommend if you haven't read it yet. Third author is Mary Shelley. The first time I read Frankenstein, I didn't think too much of it, but after having lectures and discussions about it at uni and learning more about Shelley's life, it got a whole new meaning. It's such a fantastic, very intricate book full of metaphors, so you definitely should read it if you haven't yet. And if you're interested in Shelley's life, I recommend Romantic of Loss. It's a double biography about Shelley and her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, who wrote A Vindication of the Rights of Women. I've reviewed it on this channel, I'll leave the link below. Fourth author is Virginia Woolf. Mrs. Dalloway is definitely one of the greatest novels ever written. And if you disagree, we're going to argue about it, and you're going to lose. Woolf not only wrote great novels and essays and short stories. She also had a very interesting life. She was a member of the Bloomsbury group that was a group of intellectuals in the beginning of the 20th century that gathered in London. If you're interested in learning a bit more about Wolf's life, I recommend Virginia Woolf, An Inner Life by Julia Briggs. Fourth author on this list is Emily Bronte. I was obsessed with Wuthering Heights as a teenager. I thought it was the most romantic thing ever written. As I grew older and hopefully wiser, I understood the problematic aspects of both the characters and relationships in this novel, but it's still such a great book and it's a classic for a reason. I think someday I should write an essay with the title Wuthering Heights or A Tale of Personality Disorders because everyone in this book definitely has a psychiatric diagnosis. The third author is another Bronte, is Charlotte Bronte, because Jane Eyre is one of my favorite novels. I love the message about independence for women that she advocates in this book, in a time where this kind of idea was considered very controversial. So I think it is a very important book. I know some people don't think much of it and definitely don't think it's that much of a feminist book, but it has its value and it should not be underestimated. Seventh author is Meg Cabot. I read the Princess Diaries and the Mediator series throughout my teenage years and I think they bring such nice messages for, for young people of acceptance and valuing true friendships and embracing who you really are. I think they are great books not only for teenagers but also for everyone that remembers how awkward and exciting high school can be. Meg Cabot is one of my idols and I had opportunity to interview her last year. It was a dream come true. She was every bit as lovely and funny and, and smart as I imagined. I'll leave the link to the interview below if you're interested. Next author is Julia Quinn. She writes funny, witty Regency novels. They're a sure source of delightful entertainment and 
so many feels. They're definitely my comfort reads. Author number nine is J.K. Rowling. Do I really need to say anything? I, she gave me a magical childhood and I'll always be grateful for that. Author number 10 is Azar Nafizi. I've mentioned her on my Netflix book tag video and I talked about reading Lolita in Tehran. I'll leave the link to that video below. But Nafizi is an Iranian author and she wrote about being a literature professor during the Iranian revolution. So she started a small book club with some of her former students, all young women, and they discussed forbidden works of Western literature. So she basically writes about the love for literature as a form of resistance to oppression. And what's not to love about this? This book really changed me. And I cannot recommend it enough. The next author is Louise O'Neill. She has two novels published, Only Ever Yours and Asking For It. She's a feminist and she's very outspoken, very active on social media, so I recommend not only her two novels but also following her on Facebook or Twitter. This one is a dystopian novel that shows a society where women are basically created to attend to the needs of men. So they all go to a kind of school where they learn how to be pretty and how to satisfy men and they, when they reach a certain age, they are picked either as wives or mistresses or chastities. There are the women who look after the girls in this school and teach them. It's a pretty dense and a bit distressing novel, but it's definitely very interesting. Next author is Clarice Lispector. She's a Ukrainian-Brazilian author. She writes in that sort of stream of consciousness and style. And I believe most of her books have been translated to English. Her novels are great, but her short stories are really my favorite. Author number 13 is Harper Lee. I loved To Kill a Mockingbird so much. But surprisingly, what actually got Lee into this list was Ghost Set Watchmen. I know a lot of people hated this book and I'm aware of the controversy surrounding the publishing. But I still think it's a fantastic and important novel. It's a difficult book to read, especially if you loved Atticus Finch as much as I did. But that book is about facing the fact that our idols are imperfect. There are no real heroes. And it raises the question, how do you keep loving and respecting someone when they believe in something that you despise? Next author is Isabel Allende. She's a Latin American author and her novels have elements of magical realism and they are mostly centered around women. Paula is the memoir about her family that she wrote when her daughter was in a coma. So it is a touching book, but at the same time she did not transform it in a great drama. She made it light-hearted and even funny in some bits. And it's a very interesting book if you like Latin American history and if you are interested in learning about what was going on in Chile during the military coup in the 70s. And the last author on this list is Maya Rodale. She writes historical romance, but I haven't actually read any of her novels. What actually got her on this list was this book. It's called Dangerous Books for Girls, The Bad Reputation of Romance Novels Explained. It's non-fiction and it's like a series of essays about why romance novels and other kinds of literature focused on women and made mostly by women why these books are considered like a lesser form of literature and that they have no actual value. There's a misogynistic aspect to it. So it's a very interesting book. And if you consider yourself a feminist and you happen to like romance novels as well, this is definitely a must read. So this is my list of 15 authors. I don't mean to start a tag or anything, but I would love to hear what 15 authors would be on your list. You can either leave it in the comments below or make your own video. So that's it for today. I will see you soon. Bye!